Good morning, Grade 12. This is our second geomorphology lesson, and we are heading for lockdown, but it's okay. We can do geomorphology in lockdown. The drainage density. I'm almost sure that you will never be asked to actually calculate the drainage density of an area, but what is important is that you know how to do it. So um, if we look here, you almost have to um, learn this as if it was a definition right here. So to calculate the drainage density, it's the total length of all streams in the drainage basin divided by the total area of the drainage basin, giving us either a low density or a high density. We've had a look at this diagram as here as well. Here we've got the low density, and that is caused by either there being very little precipitation, um, or the other reason could be that there's very good infiltration, lots of natural vegetation, so the infiltration is good. On the other hand here, we have got the high drainage density, either indicating, again, a lot of water on the surface, so there's been a lot of precipitation, or um, vegetation has been removed, there are um, artificial surfaces and so on, so you're having um, much less infiltration. We've got it here as well. The runoff is divided into two different types. We've got sheet flow and channel flow. None of these are rocket science people, they are what they say. I'm not too concerned about the different types of infiltration. We just know that base flow um, is when um, the water joins into a river. We're going to look at that now. now. So factors which influence runoff, infiltration, um, and then also the rate of erosion. Great tools, you need to know that where there is more runoff, there is going to be more erosion. And erosion is never good. It removes the valuable topsoil. So we can have a look. Precipitation, this is the type of rain um, that you're having, I suppose, any precipitation, but particularly rain. Heavy storms means the water would run off quicker, whereas gentle rain would give you more infiltration. Winter or summer rain, this is also more to do with temperature than actual season. I mean, obviously, the hotter it is, the more evaporation there's going to be. The soil moisture content, if the soil is full, it won't absorb any more. Vegetation. Um, always refer to natural vegetation where you're asked about this, but um, in fact any vegetation is better than, than nothing. Gradient of the slope. Steep slope. Water is going to run off quickly. Gentle slope. Not so much. Porosity. This is SpongeBob SquarePants at his best. Holes in the rocks. Can the water go in? And then finally permeability. Can the water actually flow through the rocks? These are the different types of rivers. I want to um, look first here at River C. And this is our um, river that's going to have water in it all year round because it does intercept the groundwater. So it has base flow. This is referred to as a perennial river. Now, both A and B are non-perennial rivers and would be indicated on a topographical map with a dotted line. So River A is the... Um, uh, episodic river and will only have water in it during or just after it's rained. River B is now the periodic river and it will have water in it during the rainy season. So that does mean that for most of South Africa this is going to be during the summer months. Exotic rivers, it's a definition that I'd like you to know please. River that carries the characteristics of its source and not the surrounding region. South Africa, we've got the Orange River. Top of Africa, we have the famous Nile River in Egypt. I think that's it. Thank you, Great Wells.